So last time we ended class with this kind of long derivation of BO's coefficient. Uh, I won't ask you to do that. I just wanted you to see where it, how, where it comes from. And this was the final result, that that coefficient multiplying the pore pressure is 1 minus KT. So uh, that's the total or uh, bulk modulus of the skeleton, so the solid plus the pores, over the bulk modulus of the solid. So for material like sand, so the bulk modulus of the solid is like the bulk modulus of quartz. And so that's a very high value compared to if you were to sort of try to test the volt modulus of sand, it would be a much lower value. Uh, and so approximately, uh, in that case, this term would be zero. And, you know, you'd have a very large number divided by, I mean, a very small number divided by a very large number, giving you something close to zero, and therefore alpha is approximately one. And then you get back Terzaghi's effective stress via that model. Uh, for rocks, a, a common value uh, of the BO coefficient is around 2 thirds. Here's some real values again on real data. Uh, for a, a dry out of a sand with a uh, porosity around 0.33, uh, you see for low confining pressures, uh, the bulk modulus is, in fact, close to 1. And for higher confining pressures, it does reduce a little bit. And that's because uh, in, for higher confining pressures, the, the, uh, you're compressing some of the porosity out of the material <coughs> and increasing the bulk modulus of the skeleton. Um, also, for a sandstone, which has a much lower initial porosity, you see some effect of uh, changing BO coefficient with respect to pressure. And this is because, again, the, the bulk modulus of the skeleton material would be pressure dependent as well. So some real values for BO's coefficient. Uh, 